Welcome to the Archaeology Studio. Today's episode is concerned with what makes archaeology important today. By the end of this episode, you will be prepared to discuss what we can learn from archaeology and how those lessons can be meaningful, relevant, and applicable in our modern world. Furthermore, you can consider how to improve the practical contributions of archaeology. The substance of archaeology requires obtaining factual material evidence from the past, but the full scope of the discipline involves more than just finding old and forgotten things from bygone eras. Archaeological evidence and long-term material records provide essential baseline information about the world, and then this information could be developed or applied in diverse ways. Knowledge about the past can clarify how many of our modern-day political, economic, and social issues came to exist. This approach is most productive in historical studies that work with specific occurrences such as how a certain political state developed or how a particular religion gained popularity. In these cases, the more recent past naturally bears the most direct relevance, and evidence from the more distant past tends to be indirect and vague. Perhaps more powerfully in archaeology, we can find parallels between past and present. The aim here is not to study the origins or context of specific known historical events. Rather, the aim is to seek similar kinds of events in the past and to learn how real people faced those situations. With this ability to draw a parallel between past and present, we can make more factually informed decisions about our actions and policies today that will create long-lasting effects into the future. Importantly, we can learn what was successful and unsuccessful when people were confronted with changing climate and sea level dynamics of population growth and density, and other real-life issues that confront us today. In this general approach, one of the most productive examples in my work has been at the Retidian site in Guam. With numerous deep excavations, I could outline what happened in the long-term chronology of artifacts, coordinated with other factors such as changing sea level compositions of food middens, and configuration of resource habitats. The multiple lines of evidence allowed a holistic view of the natural and cultural history of this place. Based on this factual outline, I then could examine the chronological trends. In this way, I could learn what happened during the periods of notable change. And equally, I could learn what happened during the periods of sustained continuity. In whatever site or region you are studying, you should be able to illustrate the chronological sequence with multiple lines of evidence. Wherever you can identify a cross-correlation in those lines of evidence, you can explore what may have caused it. You can consider how people adapted and changed in some ways while they maintained continuity in other ways. The logical thought process involves first describing what happened and then building testable hypotheses in order to learn the underlying core reasons about why some strategies have been successful while others have been unsuccessful. Wherever you are researching, you should be aware of what the landscape looked like and how people lived in this environment during measured 
time periods. When you look at the chronological order of those time periods, then you can learn how people adjusted the locations of their settlements and the patterns of using their surrounding habitats through time. You can examine whatever lines of evidence are available, and you can develop programs for obtaining new information. In principle, the primary datasets from archaeological sites offer intrinsic values for learning about the past, and indeed for learning about our world in general. Nonetheless, archaeologists still need to translate the findings in a way that makes sense in modern life and experience. Archaeologists can participate in public outreach and education. In this way, the information can be accurate, and it can be integrated with other activities for learning, appreciating, and developing new knowledge. If archaeologists can think critically about their work and communicate their results clearly with the public, then we can move beyond the superficialities about how the past informs who we are today. More significantly, the facts of archaeological research can be understood better by everyone and accepted more into mainstream thoughts, public awareness, and policy-making decisions. In concluding this episode, now you should be familiar with the issues of making archaeology meaningful and relevant today. In whatever situations you might encounter, you can apply this framework and maximize the potential for archaeology in modern practice. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and that you will explore more with the Archaeology Studios.